Hey, my fruit loving friends, I bet you have never seen a video on cheese making that started out at the lemon tree. But this is my Meyer lemon. If you've been around any time at all, you've seen it. And um, we're at the end of January now, and you can see they're starting to turn a little bit orange. And that's because the Meyer lemon is crossed with some sort of a mandarin. And even though I've been picking lemons as I've needed them off of this tree since, oh, probably November, um, we started getting cold in November and the cold weather usually entices these things to change colors. So they started changing colors and they're okay at that point. But when you start seeing the Meyer lemon start looking more orange, I wish I had a regular lemon to put beside it. Uh, they're really starting to get ripe and get sweet and get a, a terrific, more complex flavor with it. But anyway, um, I'm just going to snip off a couple of these lemons. And I'm going to get, this is, this is one way that I prune my tree, because I don't prune it otherwise uh, very much. But as I'm taking a um, fruit off, I'll cut that branch back. And that is the biggest extent of pruning that I do to it. There's a couple <clears throat> of pretty nice lemons that ought to work. Making cheese? Yeah. I'll meet you in the kitchen. We'll get started. Okay, this is a simple cheese. And this is as simple as it can get. Uh, Helen and I went shopping on different days. Oh, a little while back and both of us knew we needed milk and both of us bought it. That don't happen around here very often, but this milk is coming up to, well, it is at expiration, but it's still good. I checked it. So uh, I don't want this to go to waste. I haven't made cheese in a long time, so I thought this was a good opportunity since I've got milk that's going to go bad on me and I've got nice ripe Meyer lemons and the whole process is very simple is to heat the milk and the milk needs to be a whole milk uh, preferably it needs to be real milk but we don't get real milk around here uh, it has been pasteurized but it's not been ultra pasteurized so up to that higher temperature so just regular whole milk you probably can do it with skim but you need the fat and the whole uh, whole milk is going to give you the better fat content on it and then you just need to bring that up to a certain temperature and i think that's around 180 degrees or so if you want to check that out and do your candy thermometer and all that stuff. But I just bring it up to short of a boil where it's frothy. Uh, like where they put it in that frothy milk in your coffee at the fancy coffee joint. So that's about what I look for. Uh, get it up to that temperature. Then add your acid. Uh, traditionally that's <clears throat> done with various different things. You could use vinegar or, or ascorbic acid probably or you know any kind of a high acid content but in this case we're going to use the Meyer lemon you got to think that whatever acid you use is going to have some effect on the flavor of the cheese and this is a very very simple cheese it's not complex at all it's very simple <clears throat> uh, and uh, and basic it is not a high cream cheese As a matter of fact it's crumbly and um, the flavor on it is uh, probably going to be impacted some. It's not going to taste like lemons, but you understand what I'm saying. It's going to be impacted some there. Then you can flavor the cheese afterwards, uh, after the process is made. Put the lemon in, take it off the boil, uh, skim the curds away from the whey, and press that out. And then you've got your cheese. And then the traditional way to do it is to flavor it then. I'm going to do something different since I know that is kind of a bland cheese. Uh, as I was walking back into the house, I had some nice rosemary out there, so I grabbed a small sprig of rosemary. I've got some thyme and a whole clove of garlic. And I'm going to try something really different here. I'm going to put just a touch of liquid smoke in when I bring it up to the boil, thinking these aromatics, when they're heated, will infuse the cheese a little bit better. Uh, kind of my personal experiment with this thing. Now, what I've done with that other lemon is simply juiced it. And that gave me about a quarter of a cup. That may not be enough, so I'm going to keep this one on standby. And I even kept these. These things are really getting ripe because they, you can see how that broke up when I, when I squeezed it. And the pulp just pushed right out of it. I had to push the pulp through the strainer. Yes, I eat it. But these, um, 
this peeling on the Meyer lemon is so very thin and uh, when it gets to this point it actually is almost like a kumquat. It's uh, it's very edible. They have a nice flavor to it and the pith is not bitter at all. Um, I might just toss that in too. Anything that I can get out of the milk easily um, before we try to form the ball with it. Now, normally the reason you wouldn't do this is because all the flavoring is going to end up in the whey and not end up in the cheese. But anyway, that's the way I'm going to do it. Now it's going to go into the pot, bring it up to a boil or just short of a boil. Then we're going to add our acid. Be right back. Okay, so the milk is getting up that frothy look to it. And I did this kind of slowly this time because I had something to do. So I just turned the heat on the milk kind of on a medium low, not quite to the medium point. Let it heat the overall body <clears throat> up to temperature, but knowing that it wouldn't bring it to a boil. And uh, instead of just putting the herbs in there, which I'm still not convinced is a good idea, I did a little bouquet garni. Um, I don't know how that's going to infuse against, that's my experiment here. You don't need to do that necessarily. And I also chose not to put the rind, the lemon rind in there because it is somewhat acidic. And I didn't want it to have that reaction because the acid is what makes the chemistry happen and makes it start to separate the curds from the whey. And um, so I was afraid that would prematurely do that. So I nixed that idea. Now, I don't know. I went ahead and juiced that other lemon because this being a whole gallon of milk, I don't know if a quarter cup is going to be enough. As a matter of fact, I don't know what is enough. Um, <clears throat> the higher acid content of whatever you're using, the less amount of the liquid you would need would be reasonable. So if you're using um, a rice vinegar or apple cider vinegar or regular vinegar, it would take probably less than it would a citrus. And you can do this with limes or, or lemons or whatever. I'm just going to start adding this in since I don't know how much is enough and hopefully we're going to stay now I've turned the uh, heat off of this now so you see it's that, uh, that frothy look and now we should start seeing some separation happening And if this is not enough for a full gallon of milk, I just happen to know where I can go get another few lemons. I can see it starting to curdle, if you will, a little bit. And also when you're heating this up, by the way, once you get to that higher heat stage, you want to make sure that uh, they don't have to come to a boil, but you want to make sure that you don't scorch the milk. Now, I'm going to give this a few minutes. You can see it starting to separate some there. See the cheesy starting to form? I don't know how long this is going to take, and I may have to get more lemon, but I'm not going to bore you with watching that until it's ready to take out and run through the cheesecloth. It's working. Stand by. Okay, wasn't happening fast enough for me, because I did go get another lemon and put it in. So that was three whole Meyer lemons, and that was about three quarters of a cup. But now you can see the magic has happened and uh, I'm gonna stir this just a little bit more before I start pulling it out but what I look for is for that whey this is curds and this is whey look for that whey to be opaque somewhat and that's about exactly 
what it is. And so I'm not going to bore you with the whole process, but pardon. I have a uh, colander with some cheesecloth here, and I will take this curds that have separated. Isn't that look nice? I will take that, strain that, put that into um, some cheesecloth, and then I'll show you the next little step of making it come together. Looking good though. It's a working. Wow, okay, quite a bit of cheese come out of that and you can see it's uh, it's crumbly and that's the way this cheese will be but right at this point it looks almost like a cottage cheese but it's a little bit more firm. You can see the color of the whey that's there. Kind of that yellow but opaque color. That's how you want it to do. Got most everything out here. At this point, it's traditionally when, if you wanted to season that cheese with the herbs that I had, um, this is when you could do it. I can tell you that without a shadow of a doubt, I can taste the thyme and the rosemary in this already. I could tell it from smelling it, but there's nothing wrong with doing this because this is a bland cheese. And uh, I'm going to have to play with that to make a recipe out of it. But uh, one thing I didn't do and wouldn't want to do beforehand is salt it. It definitely needs salt. So uh, I'm going to start adding a little bit of salt to it. Um, and to further that experiment, I pulled me out a little bit of it here. I diced up some of this lemon peel. That I think will just be a good infusion for this cheese and I'm going to uh, salt that and I'm going to mix those two together and just use this little strainer to strain it out now uh, you probably yeah you need to see this I'm gonna have to set you down right here I'm gonna try to show you um, kind of the next step now also that way I'm gonna talk to you while I'm doing it that way can be used. As a matter of fact, I think you could do this process again and get another batch of cheese. Maybe the, that's how they do the uh, ricotta. Um, but I'm not sure. I did that years ago, but I can't remember. But um, it, it really, it's been it's been brought up to a boiling point. It has no probiotics in it. You know, a lot of that other stuff we look for. Uh, you could use it uh, to boil pasta in or potatoes or something like that if you wanted to but the one thing I do know about it at this point that it is highly acidic uh, in its content so I'm gonna let this cool down and carry it right back out to my uh, lemon tree or maybe another one that's struggling out there we have extremely high um, pH soil here in Vegas this would help to lower the acidity and um, feed the worms a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do with mine because this is a big enough project for me. Now let me see if I handle how I can show you what I'm doing. Um, I've just got this in a Pyrex, letting it drain through. I'm going to take three, if I have enough cheesecloth here, I'm going to take three corners of this cheesecloth and pull it together like so now I'm going to take the fourth corner of it here and start wrapping it and as I'm doing that it's putting of course the pressure on the cheesecloth I'm just going to do that to get a little more pressure on the uh, cheesecloth so that it will drain. This one was not long enough to make that effective. Usually when you see cheese sometime in this stage it'll have it uh, kind of a belly button in the top of it and that's what happens. Um, I'm just going to leave that as it is and put something on top of it. To let it continue draining 
I've already got that prepared. I just took the uh, milk jug, um, put a little water in it to give it some weight. Move this back so maybe it's a little better. And let that whey continue to drain out of there. Now, this is the point. I'll leave it here for, I don't know, until I get ready to fool with it again. So, at least a couple of hours at least. I've done it before where I hung it and left it overnight, and that works fine too. But here's that point. Show you the final product next. All right, let us see how this turned out. It's been about, I don't know, a few hours. <clears throat> Three or four, maybe. I can tell you those herbs and the liquid smoke that I added in, I can tell the floral difference of it. There you go. Mm. So, comes out looking pretty nice. We can tell the one that I added the lemon zest or rind into. <clears throat> I had a little bread there that I've already tasted that with. And we're going to do the same with this one. I'm going to stick this back here for just a second. Let's give it a taste. Mm. Maybe add a little something else to it. All right, the flavor on this again is is really very bland compared to a lot of cheeses. Um, and I'm just going to take an edge off of that because I want to get a photo opportunity with it. As you can see, again, it's still crumbly, but you can cut it. And it somewhat spreads. I'm going to put just a, another sprinkle of salt on it. And a little dash of oil. Well, there you go. It works. Adding the herbs, you can definitely taste it at that stage. I might want to play with that recipe a little bit. But don't add the herbs. Just makes the, um, um, makes the simple farmer's cheese. You can take this also, slice it, fry it. It doesn't melt like a traditional cheese does. So it fries and gets a brown coat on it real good. Matter of fact, you could um, even batter and fry it. So... Does it taste like Meyer lemons? No. This with a lemon rind in it, though, does have that um, flavor that you would expect out of it. But there you go. Simple, homemade, probably called more than any other time uh, farmer's cheese made with Meyer lemons. <clears throat>